Welcome back to the stream, everybody. We're going to be continuing where we left off on Friday. Um, and we're going to continue with the story of how we wipe our sins and um, what Duncan and Power are going to do next. Let's talk to Kindly Cheng to see if she says anything. I think you have business to attend to, Power. No, go away. I'm busy. Okay. I guess she has nothing to attend to. Um... Let me know if the background noise is too much. It's a bit hot today, so I have a fan on. Just checking out what's around here, because I don't know what's here. Don't know the people. Don't know the shops. It's cool that they're all like, in boats together. I like that. Ooh, there's a smuggler. Let's go talk to the smuggler. Ooh, we can check the bowl hole too. Just off the docks, you spot a sea-worn man with a smile that's almost too wide for his head. His teeth shine white against the thick black bush of his beard. His clothes are a myriad of colors, patterns, and fabrics. A smattering of cultures draped across his body. If there's anything he's clearly advertising, it's the extent of his travels. You seem someone. You see something you like? Hold on. I have to go fix something real quick. I will be. Sorry about that. The uh, wind was blowing through the blinds too much, and it was causing too much of a clatter, and I could not focus. So, um, so you see something you like. This voice is coarse like steel wool on your eardrums. Come and get it, because now's your last chance. Everything is on sale. Won't find prices like these anywhere else, my friend. Um... These goods around here, the goods of yours, look like you've they've uh, changed hands a few times. You've s are you, you selling stolen merchandise? He shrugs, the motion nonchalant and uncaring. I take what I can get. Sometimes I find things. Sometimes I take things. Sometimes I play the game. I invest invest a little, make a little something more in return. He crosses his arms and looks you over. Why do you ask? You judging a perfectly respectable businessman such as myself in these harsh times? You've never been in business. I can see it. You've Hey there, uh, you've no fault. You've no right to fault me. Um, just gonna say tough line of work you've got here. Tough, sure. Can't stay in any one place for too long. Got a photo under the radar. Um, and business partners come and go, but I get to see the world. Um, he looks out to see. His briny beard outlines a wide smile. Heading to... Macau next. Can't wait to get out of here. Um, and I guess I better buy something before you head out. That would help a man out. He nods at his wares. Go ahead and have a look. Take your time. Cool. Let's see what he's got. He's got some weapons. He has a katana. Okay, let's do weapons. We can do the katana. We need one of these for sure. Some of these, I think. Let's confirm that. Oh, that's equipment in stash. Ha 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 ha. I'm getting it now. 
actually like to split these up. Give Duncan one. Give him another. Why doesn't he have any gear? Well, that's a bit weird. I would have thought he had gear. Well, that's okay. So we've bought some stuff. Probably wasted all my money, too. See what that is, and we'll go back the other way. Your original name has been sloppily painted over uh, with black paint. Newer but somewhat weathered characters have been painted in bold brush strokes and read bold hole. Can I get up here? No. Oh, I can't change his gear. Okay, thank you. So I was all like, wait a minute, does my, my, my boy have no gear? <laughs> Am I gonna die because he has no gear? Talk to Frederick Coffey? I don't, I don't know. So I say that I, I know, or I'm better at pronouncing Asian names than German names. But then now that I'm streaming, I feel a bit conscious about it. Like self-conscious? I don't know if I'm that good. <laughs> That's close enough, friend. The club is members and invites only. I suggest you move along. Um, can I take a look around? No. Okay. You got a pretty kitty, though. Pretty crazy kitty. So pretty. I mean, I don't know, and I'm assuming Chinese. I don't know Chinese. Um, it's one of the languages I've always, like, Mandarin is one of the languages I've always wanted to learn. I have a friend who speaks Cantonese, um, and I think that's cool. I've thought about that before. Are my dogs being a little weird? Um, a massive steel security door is set into the bunker-like concrete wall. There is no sign or identification of what this place is. Um, the battered intercom is encased in a cage of welded steel and armor glass. Grainy letters are barely readable on the screen. Okay, see, I didn't know uh, Hong Kong spoke Cantonese. Uh, Chrome Alley, medical services and medical repair. Premises protected by deadly weapons and infectious diseases. Um, press the buzzer. There's a cackle of static and a brusque voice answers. What do you want? The voice's Cantonese is precise, but the accent sounds American. Is this a medical clinic? No, it's a chicken factory. What do you want? I need a cyber doc. Yeah, that's me, but listen, lady, I don't know you. I don't like people I don't know. Who sent you? Um, I'm friends with Isabel and Gobbit. Yeah, those two dang. Those two drag some real prizes out of the river. You get Nightjar to vouch for you. I'll consider giving you the time of day. Uh, Nightjar is dead. There's a long silence on the intercom. Crying shame, if that's true, and I saw that one coming. You just washed up with Isabel and Gobbit, huh? You know what that tells me? You're probably- you're here today and you'll be gone tomorrow. I'll keep my distance. I'm doing a job for Kindly. Job for Kindly, huh? You and every other hood in the Kong. Um, come back if you get some wheels around here. Otherwise, go away. Intercom is dead in a burst of static. I was hoping to get my claws, but instead, I think I'm just gonna have to deal with, um... The katana. The thug taps his earpiece, gestures with his head. Auntie Chang said you're coming. You can pass. Uh. Off we go. I'm traveling to a new location. Blah, blah, blah. We'll pick people. Let's pick our crew. Well, I can only have one. Oh, go away. What do I want? What was I supposed to take with me? Was it Isabel or was it Gobbit? I mean, I'm probably gonna take Gobbit because she heals. That's cool. Sorry, I'm replying to someone real quick. I forgot. I don't remember. 
So we'll take Gobbit, and if that gets us killed, then that gets us killed. <laughs> I think our team looks good. What I'm going to go with, I guess. That could be cool. We'll find out. Foul, oily water rains down from above, mixes with the filth and the awful and swill of the streets, turns it into a flowing slurry of unrecognizable sewage. Oh, that's gross. In the distance, the sounds of back alley activity add to the ambiance at your arrival, breaking glass, the crackling hiss of garbage fire, faint screams of terror punctuated with occasional gunshot, business violence, and misery behind blend into one. Wu winces at the stink, waves a hand in front of his face. Raymond said the prosperity is in the walled city, but I don't see it. Why would he want us to set foot in this place? You got me. As I said, the walled city is the worst slum in the Eastern Hemisphere, maybe in the world. A rat pokes its head out of the fold in her clothing, squeaks, squeals softly. She reaches up a hand to comfort it. There's something wrong with this place. It isn't just a slum. It's poisonous. It feels poisonous somehow. On an astral level, it turns my stomach to even come near it. Wu nods in agreement. Okay, you were right. This isn't the Barrens. It feels, I don't know, thicker. He, he, he goggles the place. It's a weird word. Um... Which way? Lotus Den. That's what Bao calls his little corner of hell. I don't know where it is offhand, but I have a way of finding things. There's a flurry of motion at her hip, and a second pair of beady eyes appears. Robert shifts her hand from one rat to the other, stroking each in turn. They probably aren't expecting anyone to come in force. We can kick the, in the door, drop the guards, hand over the message, and get out. Kindly doesn't want them dead. She wants them to remember where their loyalties lie. It's tough to remember much of anything when you've got a bullet in your head. I mean, we could kill them if we really wanted to, technically. Bao is the only one that has to live. But I'd rather keep Auntie Chang happy, happy than make her mad again. Um. I'm going to say our group's concern, our safety is our biggest concern. I like the way you think. Darn right. Let's do this. Okay. Let's deliver this data stick. I don't want to kill any yellow lotus, but if they start shooting my dudes, I'm going to kill a yellow lotus. <laughs> it's that simple. I have it. Featured stench emanates from the remains of this building. You see nothing that would cause it. Archon lady, braggled old woman, looks up from her sewing at the sound of your approach. Uh, clothing, clothing. I have good quality clothing for sale. Ever heard of anyone say prosperity is in the walled city? She cocks her head like a dog listening to a noise that it can't understand. Prosperity? She sounds it out herself. I don't know what that means. Any news? Interesting here? No, nothing changes here. Nothing changes. She settles her weight with an audible harumph. Strangler Bao is the big man now. He is very important. Very impatient. You know Bao. We'd love to meet him. Well, he requested a suit, and it took only one day longer than expected. He refused to accept it, she spits. You see, our friend Bao, you tell him that he still owes me for my time. I don't sew for nothing. You can't eat air. We'll get that right on. We'll get to that. Um, she nods sagely. You see that you do. Now what else do you want? We're going to walk away now. And here, just like, figuring stuff out. Over here, help. We got you. The young woman lies on the ground. She's a bloody mess. Streaks and spatters of crimson crisscross her blouse and mat her hair. Judging by the quality of her clothes and the bag on her shoulder, you'd make her out as a student. She's out of place here, as the library would be in the game of the urban brawl. She struggles to move, but she's clearly exhausted. The dark circles under her eyes tell you she hasn't slept in days. When the woman sees you heading her way, her face hardens. You see her hand slip into her jacket pocket, but as she studies your faces, the fear in her eyes gives way to curiosity. You guys don't look like you're from around here. A hacking cough shakes her, but her eyes remain fixed on you. Um, you either. Who are you? I'm a student at HKU. She glances around watchfully over her shoulder at the buildings looming above her into the windows nearby. Doing some research. Gotta finish before I can leave. 
Um, what kind of futures? Field work. I've been taking readings and gathering stories for my master's thesis on Feng Shui in the sixth world. Still in the data gathering phase? Or are you attempting to verify a hypothesis? The student's tired face brightens. Verification. Do you know much about Feng Shui? Specifically, how it applies here to Hong Kong? A little. Why don't you educate me? She nods. As you may know, Feng Shui is one of the five arts of the Chinese metaphysics before the awakening. It was thought of as a philosophical system of harmonizing people with the surrounding environment. Today, in the sixth world, Feng Shui is more than just a philosophical construct. It's an actually a form of magic. The whole thing revolves around Qi, the invisible life energy that binds every person and thing together. It's real here in Hong Kong. Nobody knows the reason why. Maybe it's only real because people believe that it is. The important thing is, it's a measurable, quantifiable phenomenon. There is an entire industry that's grown up around it. Um, this doesn't look like a place where people are harmonizing with anything. No, it isn't. Not at all. The feng shui in the walled city is completely messed up. I mean, just look at this place. She gestures at the squalor around you. The key is all wrong here. You can feel it, right? I felt something was wrong the minute I walked in. Bad key, huh? Yeah, bad feng shui. Key needs to flow or it goes sour. Positive feng shui allows that to happen. The woman clears her throat, then lets out a hacking cough. The effort requires a moment for her to recover before she speaks again. You know, I hate to admit it, but I could use some help. I started running and, well, I guess you can call it an experiment of sorts. Nothing conclusive. Just a few quick trials to support my hypothesis before I got into hardcore data gathering mode. There are only a few things left to do. If you could finish them for me, I could get out of here. She fold, holds out a crumpled piece of paper. Please follow the notes on the sheet. Why can't we just heal her? Like, like, seriously. Duncan takes the paper from her outstressed hand and examines it from you. Just say what you need us to do. I need you to make adjustments to the area's feng shui. My notes will tell you how. The goal is to remove sources of friction and to record the results. My hypothesis that even small adjustments can have a measurable impact on the flow. If I'm right, it should improve the life around here just a little, uh, and it should get a little bit better. Um, you rest, I'll take care of it. Like, why? Why? Okay, anyway, I'm gonna walk away. Someone's bloodied, I have a med kit, I have a healer, why can't I heal or med kit them? It's like, that's the first thing I would do. I'm that type of person. Makes me a bit grumpy. Street vendor gestures towards a jumbled pile of tarnished chains, custom jewelry, and trinkets of stained flannel. On a flannel, stained flannel blanket. Look at these beauties. Very valuable, very pretty. Has anyone ever said to you prosperity is in the walled city? No, he shakes his head. There's not something that someone would say around here. How can you stand this place? He gives you the stink eye. You mean my home? The vendor softens, becomes wistful. In my experience, you can get used to anything regardless of how horrible it is. It just becomes normal after a while. But this place is getting worse, no question about it. Last 20, 30 years, it's been nothing but downhill. Nothing goes right here. Maybe you can change that, though, by buying something, eh? Let's see what you're selling. Oh, I got nothing. I'm gonna walk around. What is this? Wires are sparking dangerously above the doorway. Let's patch the worn out coating. A quick pack job with some nearby waste rubber leaves the wires safe once more. Oh, repair the walled city. Oh, okay. Cool. I don't want to talk to him yet. We're going to go back this way and then back the other way. The market stall has been picked clean. It's only replaced by a pool of dried blood. Well, that's horrible. Gobbit comes up short. She gestures down at the pile of filthy rags on the ground, a man's shirt encrusted with dried blood and grime. Hold up. This clothes has a lot of negative energy coming off of it. I think there's a spirit bound to it. Interesting. What can you tell me about it? Well, it's a ghost, either that or a spirit of a man that thinks it's a ghost. It's hard to be sure. She starts with a clo cloth frowning. Whatever it is, it's upset. I can feel its anger and sorrow from here, but that's all I can get from it while it's hiding like this. Maybe I could coax it out 
I could coax it out of the cloth and talk with it if you want. Maybe it'll, it'll lead to something. She shrugs. Or it could attack us and rip out our souls. There's no way of telling. Go for it. Sure thing. Her eyes go beady, her nose crinkles. Just let me try to establish a connection. <sighs> Air above the bloody rag shimmers. Slowly something close to a man shaped to a man shaped coalesce oh, that's weird. Something close to man shaped coalesces into being. A soft voice echoes from the deep inside, as if it began somewhere else. What is this? The spirit peers at you through eyes as soft and undefined as poached eggs. Where am I? Ah, uh, you've sh uh, Kulun, the walled city. His expression changes, moves from lost to found. Still, it raises his hands to examine them, blank eyes sweeping over dead flesh. How? Um, what was the last thing you remember? The last thing? The spirit searches the sky for an answer. I was pushed out of my shop, hunted through the alley's eye. His spirit mouth widens in horror. Bow, and his men. I couldn't pay them, wouldn't accept their protection. Proud, I was too proud. A cold light flares from something deep in its throat. They tore me apart, butchered me like a duck, they. It searches the sky, the ground, tearing the memories inside itself as it relives its own death. A network of deep cuts opens its in its waxy skin, spattering black ichor on the ground. The cold light within it grows brighter. It pulses up the thing's throat into its mouth, forcing its jaw to unhinge like a snake. A burning radiance pours out of the spirit's mouth, like vomit spattering to the ground in an ectoplasmic flood of anger and despair. Maybe you can help us. Help? It looks confused. Lost. I can. You can get us past Bao's guards into the walled city so we can find him. Or you could take out the Bao's guards, give them some of what they gave you. Let's say that. Yes, revenge. The resonant of the words penetrates you, scrapes at something inside you. Robert gives you a sidelong glance. Careful, pal. Chang didn't want any yellow lotus killed. Revenge. The spirit's spidery fingers twitch. They begin to curl, then taper, then blacken until then a set of wicked sharp hooks. The spirit looks at you expectantly. Um... This is what I should do. This is what I want to do. I guess we'll do what we should do. Wait, maybe you could let all that hatred go. Be better than them. Could you get me into the bow's lotus den peacefully? The spirit's eyes roll in its head and it shudders, struggling to let the passion dissipate. I had a friend. It squeezes its eyes shut as it struggles to remember. A smuggler of animals. He had a space. Hidden. Secret. Yes, spirit, tell me about the secret space. An entrance... In the sublevels, the spirit clasps its hand in its head. A shoot, a door, red paint, and numbers. Three, or five, three, five, three. Why do I keep thinking three? Five, four, six, five. Five, four, six, five. Thank you, spirit. The entity squeezes its eyes shut and turns away and repeats the numbers. I don't feel like I got anything out of that. Like, straight up wanted to murder those guys instead. Looking around to see if there's anything I can fix. This is where we came in. I have to find a way to get down. I'd rather have that guy rip them to pieces. Hmm. Come on upon a heavily muscled triad soldier screaming at a bearded old man holding a bleeding nose. The punk wags a cheap disposable cred stick in the old man's face. This? 
A bright plastic case could look cheerful if it weren't smeared with blood. This isn't enough. You've got two options, old man. You can find a way to pay me all the money, or you can drag your bony body deeper in the wall. Find a spot for yourself there where the pimps and the with the pimps and the predators. They should be they should find a nice use for you. Your choice. The old man wails. It's not fair. I can't just pack up and leave. I've been living here 22 years, and I... Is this how it's going to be? He rolls his burly shoulders. Fine by me. No. Seriously? Seriously. Seriously. I might kill him. Fires have been set aflame and have been burning for some time. The smell is awful. Walk away. But I can't fix that. Why? Hmm. Oh, bucket of sand. Well, now I can. Or the sand and the flames. The flames are still stifled beneath this dirty sand and soil from the bucket. There we go. We've helped the walled city yet again. I'm gonna like probably murder these lotus people. That guy's a bit scary looking. A bit big. And that's the red door. Well, I want to find things to fix. So that's what I'm going to go do first. That's well, also a red door. Scared behind heavy bars, old rotors, a stained, soiled keypad has been the door frame. What was it? It was five, four, six, five. Oh, door unlocked. Oh gosh. Well, I'm getting attacked by whatever this is. Hellhounds. Oh, that's wonderful. Let's go basic melee him. Oh, seriously? Oh, that's not good. Oh no. Try again. There we go. Sadly, Duncan needs to like. Make a mistake and not be able to shoot at all. <laughs> oh man. Hoped. Sweet. Got some yen. We're gonna quick save this. Go back to this door. Well, I should also see how much health I have. Yep. <laughs> 
code. I think it's the same code. Five, four, five, six. No, it is not the same code. Ooh. That's cool. But let's see what this is. Maggie's churn within stews of under the to follow green it's that sounds gross. There's a dude over here. Gunrunner. A tubby man with a twice broken nose glances up at you from a pile of gun parts. He offers you a gap tooth smile. Sorry, give me a second. Um Nice firearms here, good for protection. You got a husband or wife, you got kids, you keep them safe with one of these beauties. Quality is guaranteed. Your satisfaction is everything. Do you want to buy? Um, you ever heard of prosperity is in the walled city? He snorts his reply. If you're an organ lager or a gun rudder or a triad, that's sure, there sure is. Otherwise, you're looking at hard hand to mouth, meal to meal existence here. Bow, know you're selling guns here. Got Bao's permission to sell weapons in the stall. Been selling a lot of them, even more than usual, he grins. That's good for me. How do you stand here? Business is good. Real good. It's disgusting, but you go where the market is. Show me what we've got, just so I can see it. Cool. We'll leave. We gotta run now. So, like... Can I go over here? Or is that just background? No, I can. I came in from there. I can check back here too. Cool. What's well, back here? Oh, I'm gonna beat this guy to a pulp. Yellow Lotus Enforcer glares at you. You can see the outline of the old man's cred stick in his vest pocket. He flexes and his muscles bulge. What do you want? Step away. Right now. I saw what you did to that old man back there. I'm here to get his money back. I've got a better idea. I think I'll take your money instead, he licks his lips. Give me your cred st sticks or you'll get what the old man, old guy got. I'm not playing around. Well, I feel like playing and I have a lot of, I know a lot of fun games we can play. He comes up short, frowning. His eyes shift from your face to your biceps to his own comparatively slight build. I, uh, oh, well, whatever. There's nothing on, I, there's nothing on this old, old stick anyways. He tosses you the cheap stick back to you. The balance on the, the screen reads 063. You've got what you came for. Now get out, yeah. I got a date in an hour. And I don't need you messing it up. Um. I'm gonna kick him in the face. Your boot connects squarely with the bridge of the mugger's nose. There's a crunching sound and then he crumples like a rag doll. Gobbit glances down at the limp body of the unconscious triad shoulder. Gotta admit, there's a certain poetry to that. Yeah, there is, and I feel good about that. <laughs> um, I guess, uh, oh yeah, no, I think I'm a pretty swell elf, stats-wise. My strength is five. I don't want any trouble, boss. He excels sharply. Please, just leave me be. Item cred stick. Here you go, man. Got this back for you. Oh, thank you, thank you. I uh, don't have anything I can reward you with, but I appreciate what you did. Awesome. He cradles his cred stick in a pair of gnarled hands. Thank you so much. This is the, everything I have in the world. Well, I feel like I did a really good thing there. Right? A buff Legolas. That's pretty hard to imagine. Nice. He's still knocked out. The old rusted water valve might be able to close off the flow of the water that's pouring out of the broken pipe. Uh, let's wrench the shutoff controls. The flow of water ceases. Less clean water will run into the streets now. Sweet. I've repaired everything. Gained a karma. We're gonna save and we're gonna go... Well, we're gonna go back upstairs to the rooftops. Save and then come back down here after we finish the... The, um... Students thing. Which is like... Here. 
mean, I hope she auto finds her way there. Ah, uh, the young man startles at your the young man. The young woman startles at your approach, fumbling for something in a pocket. She recognizes you and she relaxes. Is it done? I'm done. Thank you, thank you so much. The young woman sighs with relief. She opens the flap of her satchel, reaches inside, and produces a plastic sheep. I'm not magically active, so I can't see the flow of key in the area, but I've got test strips, little sheets of paper embedded with key sensitive bacteria. It's closely close related to relative of FAB, but it doesn't see much use outside of Hong Kong. She pulls a strip out of the sheaf and holds it to the air. Within seconds, it turns ink black. She lets out a dejected sigh. Her eyes shift from the strip to her watch to the strip again. She looks utterly defeated. Man, I've been making adjustments for weeks now, trying to get the key to circulate better, and nothing seems to work. If anything, this one went bad even faster than the control steps I took when I got here. Maybe you're doing it wrong? I follow the text and everything right. It should work. The key here is rancid. That's obvious, but I swear it's even worse than it should be. No wonder this place is so disgusting. The student coughs and rests her head in her hands. That's it. You get out of here. In a little while, God tell my advisor about this. Thanks for your help. Hope you don't stay long. I sure won't. Oh. Um, that makes me sad. I felt like I could have had a better resolve with that. I already looked over here. That's right. We're gonna go back over here. I didn't kill the guy. I knocked that guy out. So, didn't break any rules. So I did. I really did want to kill him. Ah, I was like, is anything in here for me to steal? 60 yen. Awesome. Same machine has been left unlocked for restocking. There's a packaging data chip still in the tray. We're gonna take that chip. Why not? A mission item. Yeah, I didn't think she would mind that. Stangler bows code. That's good. Need his code to get into things. Enter a key code. Oh, seriously? Six three seven eight. It should just put it in. That's something that kills me. If I have a code, it should just automatically work. Oh, there's a conversation now. A large man in his 50s stands waiting, his heavily tattooed arm held in a fighter stance. His bone structure is heavy, corded muscle stands out on his arms and chest. In his youth, he must have been enormous. He doesn't talk so much as emit a low rumble. I don't know how you got in here, but you've got my attention. Good. I have a message. Oh gosh, okay, this is great. Candy Graham for Strangler Bao. Much love, kindly Cheng. You're funny. His eyes get a stony look. I don't do funny. So you're so you've got some sort of message from Chang. I can't wait to hear you mangle it. 
speak Cantonese. You speak Cantonese so well, he chuckles to himself. But before I hear it, I have a little message for her too. You tell Kindly Chang that her operations are done in the walled city. Strangler Bao has given himself a promotion and tell her that if she sends any more errand girls. Yeah, I get to be more sassy, which makes me happy. Um, if you send any more errand girls to visit him with another message, Strangler Bao is going to send them back in a box. You think you can tell her that, Erin girl? Should I write it down for you in English? Um, hold out the data stick. Just slot the stick, listen to the message, and I'll be gone, okay? I don't get to hear blah. I am gonna just totally butcher all the English, so this is gonna be life. I don't get to hear you butcher the message. I'm sad. He grabs the small plastic drive from your hand, slots it into his trade player. Kindly Chang stands erect, directly speaking to the camera. Mr. Bao, as everyone knows, you are a man of swift action. I respect that, and because of that respect, I'll get right to the point. I know where your money is coming from. I know that you have friends working for straw sandals like myself. They have been siphoning funds from their organizations. I know about the noodle shop that you launder the money through. I have tasted their broth and found it wanting. The old woman becomes flinty hard. You've been stealing from the Yellow Lotus, glorifying yourself with revenue that we have earned, and I have files to prove it. Bao's eyes widen as files begin to flit across the screen, receives bank reports, personal communications between himself and his men. Kindly Chang's continues speaking smooth and casual. Now, in the light of our recent conflict, you might be wondering, why am I keeping this information to myself? Why haven't I exposed you so you could be dragged from your Lotus den? Uh, and slowly... <laughs> slowly roasted on a rotisserie spit. In truth, I respect your ambition. You have a lot to learn about candor and loyalty, but I believe that you still have value. I'm still willing to work with you. However, in order for that to happen, we need to come to an understanding about the nature of our partnership. Ken Lee Chang steps forward, fills the screen. I own you, Bao. You and all of your men. You are my playthings. Dolls to twist and pose as I see fit. I am in this position because I am far better at this than you, and it's time that you learned it. Accept that I am telling, accept what I am telling you, and we can get back to business, prosper together. But if you continue your little rebellion, I will mail tiny pieces of you to your children and take their picture as they open the package. She produces one of her thin black cigars, lights it, holds the smoke a long time. You have 24 hours to return to the fold. If you haven't been, if you aren't licking my heels by then, the information will be released and you will become food for fish. Your choice, Bao, 24 hours. The message winks out. Strangler Bao turns away from the screen slowly. His skin is ashen. Get out. He pauses, casts his eyes on the floor, and tell Miss Chang to expect me at the Swift Winds tomorrow. He stands up straight. Tomorrow morning. I will. Thank you for your time. Just go. Just go. Sweet. I didn't kill anybody. I did it, guys. Well, there's no front door. I can't get out of it. So I guess I gotta go back where I came from. I mean, I did slightly kind of want to murder them. More than anything. But that's okay. Uh, Wu holds up his hand for everyone to stop, turns to the two of you, and hooks his thumbs in his belt. Well, that was a thing. Never thought I'd be shuttling messages between criminals in Hong Kong Syndicate. I can't imagine what Raymond would have wanted in the walled city. The place just feels wrong. Must have been important. He flew all the way here, hired runners for an escort. But why? This place makes you feel like your life has no value, that there's no point to anything. He sighs and looks at your companion. Great life you have here. Baba ignores the jab, scratches her head. I can't believe it. We actually delivered the old lady's message without anyone dying. I've had enough of triads. Let's get out of this pit. I'm with you, Gunshow. I don't need to see this place ever again. Gunshow, seriously? Woo, Wu's goggles pan down. Come to rest on Gobbit. That's not gonna stick, is it? Um, let's stay here for now. I feel like... And I wish I'd picked the other person. Seriously. 
should affect the other person. Really. Really, truly. The other person would have been much better. She could have hacked me into there. Yeah, I'm glad I don't have to dabble into Deki. I just thought I could bring four people, but I could only bring three. I missed that whole thing. I want to spend some karma. It's like the inputs don't work so much as they used to. What was I putting into? Like, I like biotech because it increases my HP for medkit use. I don't care for that. Charisma is a give or take, really. Body is important. But so is strength to get me melee weapons and unarmed. We can get this next, but I also, because I'm using this, would like to... get this strike or is it this one it's one of these that you you stab and it's really awesome but I think I'm gonna confirm that so I don't see any one of's that I would like yeah, that's what we're gonna confirm and we're gonna go from there Large X fashioned from overlapping strips of peeling duct tape. What is this? Oh, okay, that takes me somewhere. That's cool. Are my objectives? Return to Kindly Chang. She's back this way. I don't actually remember where she is. And Li Chang watches as you close watches you closely as you walk across the Mahjong parlor. As you approach, her lieutenant leans in, brings her mouth close to the triad's boss's ear. Chang smiles and nods, her eyes never leaving you. There's a twinkle in the straw sandal's eyes. I, I heard from Bao. He got my message very clearly. I understand that there was no casualties created during your little delivery run. I am pleased and surprised. Goblet did a great job of guiding us. A wire grin. Did she? Good to know. A message hand delivered from a me my message was delivered, and Strangler Bao is back in the fold, earning for me. As far as I'm concerned, our transaction is complete. While you were gone, I set the wheels in motion to wipe your identities. She pulls out her PDA, stabs a button with a lacquered fingernail. The order has been sent. Congratulations, you are now sin sinless, shadow people. Wu exhales heavily. His eyes remain focused straight ahead, but his shoulders sag. Um. Well, I guess that's done. Yeah, I guess so, but I'm not. Wu pulls himself up to his full height. Whoever gave the kill order on Carter also forced us to give up our identities and took Raymond. Wu said his jaw firm. That's all I can think about. Finding who did this, finding Ray. Um, Kylie Jang Chang holds up a hand. While I was working to get your sins burned, I also had my network look into Raymond Black's disappearance. I've been thinking about what you told me earlier, and I agree. She eyes the room carefully and leans in. I can't just let this lie. Someone killed my runners. It would be a sign of weakness to the Yellow Lotus and the others if I do nothing. She rests her PDA on the mahjong table facing you. The triad's boss tongue slips from her mouth as she looks over the top, hunting for the right button on its upside-down interface. She finds it and looks at you again. 
I have news to share with you, my darlings, the kind you won't like. Raymond Black is dead. She taps the button, and a recorded newscast appears on the screen. Raymond's photograph appears on the screen behind a reporter standing on the docks of Victoria Harbor. It's a picture you've seen before, a professional portrait taken for a press release about a youth center he was opening in the Redmond Barrens. Under Raymond's photo are the words, Seattle man killed. Another shooting involved involving the police department. A Seattle's community organizer, an industrial engineer, was apparently shot and killed while resisting arrest at Victoria Harbor last night. Hong Kong police force... Police... That's weird. Hong HKPF police report that the UCAS man, Raymond Black, was behaving radically and would not respond to the police orders to surrender. No additional information regarding Black or why he was traveling to Hong Kong are available. Police have stated that due to this shooting's proximity to last night's shootout with White Star, the investigation must remain confidential and no other details are being revealed at this time. Apparently Chang taps the button again and the video closes. Wu puts his hand to his face. This keeps getting worse. Uh, it definitely isn't getting any better. Raymond's dead. Wu puts his hand over his mouth, trying to process the information. He sways, and for a moment, it looks like he's going to pass out. Isabella reaches out to touch Wu, thinks better of it, and pulls back her hand. Sorry if you're at a loss. I never had a father, so I don't know what it's like to lose one, but sorry. Um... Raymond dies the same night we're ambushed. That's no coincidence. No way. Kindly taps the video closed. She hunts around the keypad and selects another button. I'm afraid that's not all, my darlings. This is security footage from Victoria Harbor last night. You find it contains a contradiction. The PDA shows silent, grainy video footage of Raymond sitting in a tea shop flanked by two guards. He's looking down at something in his hand, completely distracted. The footage continues, and the cameras display several black-clad figures entering its field of view from different angles, guns ready. A tall, sharply dressed man in a suit walks briskly towards Raymond, flanked by two more. Raymond stands to face him, and the camera gets a clear view of the man's suits. The bull. The clear view of the suit's face white plastic. His guards turn to draw weapons and muzzle flash erupts from all sides. One, Ray one of Raymond's guards goes down and his submachine fires wildly, um, hitting the camera. Wu puts his hands on the table and leans in. Those weren't cops and Raymond wasn't arresting, arres resisting arrest. Man, my language, my language, <laughs> my reading comprehension today is what we call difficult. What's with the guy's face? Gobbit reaches up, um, to strike the ratch perched on her shoulder. Is it a mask? It doesn't look like a mask. It looks like some sort of semi-rigid plastic implant. Real craftsmanship. She pushes out her lower lip in appreciation. Quite the fashion accessory. It's also kind of fashion accessory that stands out in a crowd. This guy's either a fool or an arrogant guy. He sets his jaw firm. Either way, I'm going to find him. Um, Kindly Chang watches Wu intently. I believe you. Wu stands back and turns to you. What now? We find out who Plastic Face Man is, then get some answers. What? With what sources? Resources. Chang's eyes sparkle. I'm afraid there are some facts that you're going to have to face. She puts on a grave face. You're alone in this country. No network, no money, no identity. I can protect you from the police, but now how would you go about discovering what happened to Raymond without me? How would you survive? This is a topic that requires serious consideration. Uh, kindly wipes... Her hand across a stack of tiles, spreading the ivory-colored pieces across the table. You've got a very long night, my sweets. Very long. You've had a very long night. And frankly, you all look horrible. Rest now. I promise you safety in my town for the night. We'll talk about the plastic-faced man tomorrow. Kindly gestures to Gob Gobbit and Isabel. Ladies, go find our friends a place to bed down in the rat's nest squat boat you call home. We'll ta I'll talk after you've slept. Figure out our next steps together. Yes, auntie. Yes, auntie. Um... I don't rat nest squat boat. We call it the bolt hole. It's an abandoned trawler we call home. Isabel tries to smile. It's homey. Meet you there. Let's go, pal. I'm beat. See, I'm going to choose every option I can not to call her auntie because I'm not allowing her to have control over me like that. She can do a lot of things, but she's not. I'm not. I'm not doing that. You two can bunk here for a while. She nods with her nose towards a hatch. You've got a head to take care of. You've each got a head to take care of your necessities. Try to knock before you enter someone else's, okay? Seriously. I know the drill. Who turns to you? Stinks of fish, just like the place we squatted at on Leary Avenue back when we were kids. The one with the Atzlin family and their dog. 
They were good people. Yeah, until 162s decided they wanted the place. He wipes his nose with a gloved hand. They were good people. Sorry that had to happen to him. He stretches and his spine pops like a handful of firecrackers. I think I've been up for something like 36 hours straight. He drops his arms. And this has been one horrible day. Time to end it. The orc turns to you, raises an eyebrow. Anything you need before I leave it to you? Um, think I'll have a look around. Okay, but get some sleep soon. You look like you could use it. We'll go see kindly in the morning. Figure out what our next move. I want to talk to Duncan. Make sure he's okay. Hey, pal, I got some things I got to take care of here. Let's talk later. Never mind, Duncan. Let's take the stairs. Oh, Isabel's up here. Oh, they're upstairs. Cool, let's talk to Gobbit. Hey, Seattle. I'm not really in the mood to hang out right now. Heavy stuff going on, you know? It'll be fine, but for the time being, I'd rather be alone. We'll talk later. Seems like everyone just wants me to stop. I just go to bed. I'm up later, bow. I'm busy. As I thought. Um, I don't think I have much more time for today, uh, because, like, the computer updating and everything. I just, I have things I have to take care of this evening. Um, whoop, nope. Stash. What's in the stash? Um, so I would like to call it here, more than likely. Um, and we can continue this tomorrow. Uh, the cot in your cabin is neatly made with crisp looking sheets and an insulated plastic blanket. A fine layer of dust coats its surface. It's been a long time since anyone slept here. Go to sleep. You climb into the cot and worm your way under the blankets. They've been starched stiff as boards, but you've slept beneath worse. The lice and bed bugs that plagued your old prison cell are mercifully absent here, and the salt air is fresher than the rented stink of the Red and Barrens. The moment your head hits the pillow, the exhaustion sets in. You can barely keep your eyes open. Sleep washes over you like a warm bath, and everything goes black. really weird the dream is suffocating the shifting tunnel of glass and steel the towering silhouette of dark majesty and the shadowy dory and the teeth they snap at your heels as you claw your way back to consciousness um you open your eyes to see duncan looming over you he shakes your shoulder roughly pow come on pow wake up we gotta talk to kindly the others have already left that was a rough night he lets go of your shoulder, cocks a thumb at the hatch. We gotta go. I've been trying to wake you for a while now. You were thrashing around in your sleep. Glad you did. I was having a bad nightmare. He reaches up and rubs the back of his neck. Yeah, I didn't sleep well either. I had a bad dream last night too. What about? I never remember my dreams all that well. It was probably motion sickness. Not used to sleeping on a boat. I woke up a little while ago and hit the head. And then I came back and woke you up. You doing okay? I'll survive. He fingers... His fingers hit a knot. He winces. Oh man, nothing's gone right since we stepped foot in this country. I'll tell you something, though. And this is after a full night's sleep. I don't believe Ray's dead. What makes you think that? Uh, think about it. The statement from the cops on the newscast could be fake. Ours was. And that surveillance footage. We never saw Raymond get shot. The camera was hit by a stray gunfire. His passion is intense, but contained. Focused. Raymond's alive, pal. I know it. Make a good case. He smiles, his teeth are white and straight and perfect. Should be should have been a detective instead of a headbuster, right? His smile fades. I feel like I'm twelve years old again, squatting on a stinking trawler. My partner's gone, Raymond's gone, I'm gone, I don't even have a name anymore, and now I can't even go to sleep and hide from it all without having a nightmare. His jaw tightens and his teeth grind so loud that you can hear it. What else is gonna be taken from me? I'm here, Duncan, and I'm not going anywhere. Wu's mouth tightens. Too soon, pal. He checks his watch. Robert and Isabel left a while ago. We should get going to what, to see what the triad lady has to say. Cool. So I'm going to call it here. It seems like a good like time frame to end it. We'll stream to more tomorrow. Um, hopefully we'll get on time because, you know, 
there was no... Hopefully there will be no update tonight that forces me to be late tomorrow. And since I know that space is not going to be available, hopefully we'll um, stream a little earlier on Saturday so that we can like catch up for missing um, today and yesterday. So thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you guys tomorrow for the continuation of the stream.